To say there's a lot at stake here in Glasgow is an understatement. The science tells us what needs to be done. And we'll see in the halls behind me over the next two weeks if national leaderships have what it takes to step up. The world is overheating and extreme weather is already hitting hard. And to demonstrate the importance of this conference, we return to Evia in Greece, scene of those devastating wildfires in the summer where they're still picking up the pieces. In early August, with temperatures at unseen highs, wildfires ripped across southern Europe. The land was parched and the fires quickly spread. Northern Evia in Greece was the hardest hit. The inferno lasted for two weeks. Thousands were evacuated. Today you can see what's left. The devastation in this area was total. People are well used to annual wildfires here, but not on this scale, not with this much lost. Thousands of hectares of forest and livelihoods just incinerated. And because of the fires, a new threat. As the rain comes, so do floods and mudslides. The fires have destroyed the land's natural ability to withhold water, to act as a flood defense system. So now in periods of intense rain, the water just cascades off these hillsides. So they're using the dead trees to shore up the soil and keep the land intact. It is hard, exhausting work, but vital to preserve what's left and encourage regeneration of the forest. A big part of Evia's forest economy has been obliterated. Costas Ionu's livelihood comes from his bees, who make honey from the resin of pine trees or used to. I feel sad that this once green forest has been burnt and I find it difficult to figure out what we'll do and how beekeeping can continue to exist on Evia. We will not be around when this forest is once again able to give us honey, so for us our area has died. Collecting pine resin was an important money earner for farmers like Georgios Agnostou, but not anymore. He also lost a fifth of his goat herd to the fires. Across the island more animals died than survived. The destruction was great for farmers. Buildings were burnt, animals were lost, and grazing land has disappeared. In other words, what we had here was lost. Many years need to go by so that things can return to how they were. Helping people around the world to adapt to and mitigate against catastrophic events like this is a big part of the climate conference in Glasgow. So what does success at COP26 look like? The science tells us we need to prevent temperatures from rising beyond ideally one and a half degrees Celsius. But the 2021 production gap report shows that current government plans will produce more than double the amount of fossil fuels required to make that happen. So in Glasgow, we need a strong declaration that commits to net zero emissions by 2050, as well as big reductions by 2030. This has been a seismic event that has changed lives, perhaps for a generation. But the forest will come back because nature always does, if humanity allows it to. Well, right now, the omens here in Glasgow are not good. Just this week, we heard that even with the latest global commitments to cut emissions, we're still heading for 2.7 degrees Celsius. And remember, the target is one and a half degrees. And the $100 billion a year promised by rich nations to developing countries by 2020, well, that won't arrive now until 2023. Trust is a limited commodity here in Glasgow, and it will be a long, hard battle to reach the agreement the world needs.